श्रुति स्मृति पुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमवत व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहनावत सह नौ भुनक् सह वीरवाह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओं शाति 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 ओ पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टदशाध्यायिनी अंबत्मुसंदा भगवदगीते भवद्वेशिनी यं ब्रह्म वरुणेन्द्र रुद्रमुत स्तुन्वि दिव्यस्तव वेद सांगपद्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानवस्थित तेन मनसा पश्य योगिन यं विदुस्सुरा सुरगण देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम Yeah, him. Go ahead and mute yourself. <coughs> so we'll chant from number fifty onwards. Yeah, just one minute. Wait, wait. Yeah. बुद्धि युक्तो जहाती है बुद्धि युक्तो जहाती है जहाती है उभे सुकृत दुष्कृते उभे सुकृत दुष्कृते तस्माद योगाय युज्यस्व तस्माद योगाय युज्यस्व योग कर्मसु कौशल योग कर्मसु कौशल कर्म जम बुद्धि युक्ता कर्म जम बुद्धि युक्ता फल त्यक्वा मनीषिण फल त्यक्वा मनीषिण जन्म बंध विर्मुक्ता जन्म बंध विर्मुक्ता पदम गच्छन्त्यनामय पदम गच्छन्त्यनामय यदा ते मोहकलिल यदा ते मोहकलिल बुद्धिर्व्यतिष्यति बुद्धिर्व्यत 
व्यतीतरिष्यति तदा गंतासि निर्वेदम तदा गंतासि निर्वेदम श्रोतव्यस्य श्रुतस्य च श्रोतव्यस्य श्रुतस्य च श्रुति विप्रतिपन्नाते श्रुति विप्रतिपन्नाते यदा स्थास्यति निश्चला यदा स्थास्यति निश्चला समाधावचला बुद्धिहि समाधावचला बुद्धिहि तदा योगम वाप्स्यसि तदा योगम वाप्स्यसि and today we'll be doing the next verse which is 54 arjuna uvacha arjuna uvacha sthita pragnasya sthita pragnasya ka bhasha ka bhasha samadhisthasya samadhisthasya keshava keshava sthita dhihi किम प्रभाषेत किम प्रभाषेत किमासीत किमासीत व्रजेत किम व्रजेत किम स्थित प्रज्ञस्य का भाषा स्थित प्रज्ञस्य का भाषा समाधिस्थस्य केशव समाधिस्थस्य केशव स्थित धी किम प्रभाषेत स्थित धी ही किम प्रभाषेत किमासीत व्रजेत किम किमासीत व्रजेत किम सो यू कैन सी हाउ krishna started by teaching arjuna what atma is what is the nature of atma as being all pervasive as being nirgunam and so many attributes he gave till shloka number 38 okay so cannot be burnt cannot be dried it's not an object which you can perceive <clears throat> because it is you and it is you and yet it is all pervasive so all this all these ideas that is there in our culture arjuna probably was not surprised to hear any of this that is why in fact he asked arjuna, krishna to teach him to begin with because there is something that our shastram talks about that i do not know and uh, he recognized his fundamental problem a confusion that he has arising stemming from a fundamental problem then that arjuna was smart enough to recognize that so all along krishna was his friend arjuna's friend relative advisor so many things so many roles krishna played and now he has become a teacher <clears throat> and uh, then having said that then from shloka number uh, 39 onwards <clears throat> he switched gears and talked about karma yoga introduced karma yoga and as an attitude which is needed in order to in order to gain a mind that is capable of assimilating this fact you need a mind because simple belief is not enough belief is important but not enough and uh, therefore karma yoga comes into play and uh, so till verse number 53 which we covered last time he's been talking about two aspects of karma yoga three aspects if you will the vision of already the vision must be that the whole is ishvara not just the world created by ishvara but pervaded by ishvara also very important and so when i see it that way then all my actions will be offered unto ishvara it is offered into this yagna that is going on in chidambaram shiva is dancing 
Shiva is Nataraja. Nataraja. Dancer. What is this dance business? Sh Shiva gets bored sitting in this, in Kailasha with all, nothing. No cell phones, no air conditioner and no heater. You know, Kailasha must be cold. And so he needs, he needs a heater. No heater, nothing. And then he gets bored. So he gets up and dances, you know, because he has to warm up the body, you know. It's too cold in Kailasha. So you have to jump up and down. No, that's not the dance. The dance is this world that is going on ticking. Time is ticking and the world known to you, unknown to you is just going on non-stop. That Jagat, that Jagat is represented by his dance. And so they say, if he stops dancing, the world will come to an end. Have you heard that? Which means what? Which means <laughs> if you stop dancing means the world, what happens? The world has to move on and uh, the universe is constantly operating continuously. Space is expanding, physicists say, and so much is going on. And classes like this are also going on. And all that represented by that dance of Shiva. This much is going on. And uh, so that Ishvara, my actions are given unto him and to that Ishvara. And then what about the results which I'm anxious about? Well, no need for anxiety because things will take its, its time and in the appropriate time, appropriate results will come all defined by the laws, the laws which are not separate from Ishvara. This is the vision. That vision is there. Therefore, the karma yoga attitude becomes complete. So much we saw. And then in the last shoka, number 53, Krishna apparently concludes. He says, if you are clear about this vision and if you are, if you are no longer confused by this idea that when I do something, I become happy. And when I uh, uh, pursue certain things, then I become happy. And if I don't accomplish certain things, I become unhappy. If this is your idea, then that's confusion. But if you are clear that that Ananda is nothing but the nature of Atma, that Ananda is not coming from somewhere, it is you, you are the source of that Ananda. And that fact, if you can recognize, you will recognize if you have this karma yoga buddhi. So he says, Samadhau achala buddhihi tada yogam avapsyasi. That's how he concluded. Yogam there does not mean hatha yoga and all these poses, you know, vrikshasana and virabhadrasana and all that. It means jnanam. Jnanam. Then knowledge will take place. Like that he concluded. And so here, now Arjuna is asking a question for the first time in this, in this uh, teaching, he asks a question. He's going to ask many questions as we go forward, you will see that. But here, first question he's asking and uh, so we chanted the shloka just now, sthita pragyasya ka bhasha samadhisthasya keshava Kim Prabhasheta Kimasita Vrajeta Kim. So Kim. So Kim is a standard, a standard question in Sanskrit. Kim. <coughs> so there are three question words in this shloka. Ka bhasha. Ka is also a question. Kim and Kim. Two times Kim appearing. So clearly he's asking uh, two or three questions here. Okay, so and Arjuna has introduced some words. Those words that Krishna has never talked about are mentioned those words explicitly. Look at that. Stitha Pragnaha Samadhisthaha Okay, Samadhisthaha and Stitha Dhihi Three words he has used here. Very important words. So, 
ಸ್ಥಿತ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ 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 ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಪ್ರ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ವೆಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ and of course arjuna has knowledge of lot of things he has now how to take a family he has knowledge of state state craft governance he is archery he is the greatest archer known to people at that time so he has a lot of knowledge and uh, he is also a dancer some of you those of you who know mahabharata well he is a dancer also like this he has a lot of skills he knows so much but here pragna of course refers to aham param brahma asmi aham brahma asmi i am that whole i am brahma param brahma that knowledge is being referred to by krishna of course and that is pragna here <coughs> and then sthita pragya sthita very very interesting uh, our shastram keeps using this word sthita i explained this before to all of you i will say that again comes from the root sanskrit root stha stha means to stay in the sense of stay so you look at all this these english words stay state steady stationary what else uh station situate in situ in situ means original form situ so look at that that stha dhatu look at how i always think of this whenever i come across this word in sanskrit so clearly that stha dhatu has has pervaded into the english language also so that pragna which stays which stays a steady knowledge what is the meaning of steady knowledge we don't use we don't use that phrase you know when we talk to our children do you have steady knowledge of physics of your of what your teacher is teaching or not steady knowledge no we don't use those words but here it means a knowledge that is free from doubts means is vague you know i i i i attended the class but it's all very vague you know and uh, in school poor children they also have this problem and these days online teaching and uh, parents are all complaining and one parent was crying is weeping just how do i do this my children i have to teach my child and the teachers uh, videos are all very poor and so how is the child going to learn so much so much has to be communicated that knowledge that is there in the teacher's mind has to be communicated to the student and the student has to grasp it and student has to appreciate it enough to say i have some doubts and let me clarify those doubts all this process is involved and uh, so that process is upset i feel in this pandemic times and so freedom from doubts and freedom from error error so doubts can be there and then you, you sh- <coughs> i think i know but i really do not know that's called error so i uh, got it but then uh, you misunderstood it that also is possible so we allow for all these possibilities and then there is also this viparita bhavana means once having known the, known a fact then you behave as though you don't know it that is also possible and uh, so that happens that happens when uh, you know when our our american friends come to india we see it very often i gave this example before 
So they're not they're not driving a car here, but they've hired a taxi and then they want to sit in the passenger side. And then immediately they go and then they guess where they go. They go to the driver's side because driver's side here is passenger side there. And so that confusion is there, even though they know very well that, you know, things are different opposite here versus US. And so that knowledge is there, but it is, it's, it's because it, there's a past behavior, past force that is there, which, which does, which makes me behave in a way different from what I know. Anyway, so f- doubts and error, if you can remember that, that is good enough. Those are the two obstacles to sthita pragnyatvam. For knowledge to be steady, you must be free from doubts and any errors that are there, that might be there. That's the idea here when we talk about sthita pragnya. <clears throat> so he's talking about, Arjuna has used a very beautiful word called sthita pragnya. And he's going to ask, tell me about this person who has knowledge. You, you praise this knowledge so much. But I want to know more about such a person. How will it be when this knowledge is gained? And you can tell me that by describing such a person. And that person I'm going to call as Sthita Pragnya. That's what he's saying. Sthita Pragnya is a Bhasha. Bhasha means language. Language. <coughs> But here, it doesn't mean language, because if you say language, then, then it means it's odd. It means all wise people should speak a particular language. Otherwise, they're not knowledgeable. That can't be, that can't be true, because knowledge cannot be dependent on any language. And so here, Shankaracharya comes to our rescue, because you can't simply pick up a dictionary and figure out the meaning of this. So Shankaracharya says, Anyaihi Katham Bhashyate, like that he says. How is this person spoken of by other people? That is, the, that is how Shankara interprets this word Bhasha. How do people talk about him or her, this wise person? Okay. And then, <clears throat> and then Sthita, Sthita. Samadhistaha, that is the second word, Samadhistaha. So this word Samadhi, bit of a dangerous word because it has many meanings like yoga. So we have to be careful, especially those of you who are studying yoga and other texts. The Samadhi word has many meanings. So in the previous shloka also, the word Samadhi was there in number 53, right? Samadha vachala buddhihi. So there, what did Shankara say? <clears throat> Atma, Atmani Achala Buddhihi. Like that he translated that as, uh, no, there he said Buddhihi. Samadha Achala Buddhihi. Correct? Samadhi is mind. So that knowledge which takes place in that mind, that's how Shankara defined there Samadhi. Here, Samadhistaha, Samadhistaha. So here Shankaracharya comes to our rescue again. Atma. He says Samadhi here means Atma. And he says your, the knowledge that abides in Atma. Because it's a peculiar knowledge. It's not knowledge about something. It's knowledge about Atma. So he says knowledge that abides in Atma. That stays in Atma. Stays in Atma means what? It means it's knowledge about Atma and therefore that person sees Atma everywhere. Therefore that knowledge is, that person is no longer confused that I am a limited being. Samadhistaha. We'll talk more about this in the succeeding verses. 
but samadhisthaha. Similar, these words are all similar meanings. Sita pragnaha, samadhisthaha, and sthita dhihi. Sthita dhihi again similar. How this person who's unshaken by anything, his he is unshaken by anything else. Unshaken means what? There is no event, there is no relationship, there is no object, there is no place that can. That however beautiful, however attractive, however repulsive, however traumatic is going to shake this person. Sthitadhi. Look at that. Look at the words Arjuna uses. Okay, that means he is he has understood at least a good part of what. Krishna was talking about. <clears throat> so, sthita pragnasya samadhisthasya ka bhasha. How? Describe to me this person. And then he says, look at this. <clears throat> Kim prabhasheta. Kim prabhasheta. Prabhasheta means what? How does he speak? Bhashanam. Prabhashanam katham karoti. How does he speak? Kim can mean how also. So Kim can mean what? Kim can, Kim can mean how, etc. Here Shankaracharya interprets Kim as katham. How does he speak? Okay. And then Kima Sita. How does he sit? How does a wise person sit? And Kim Vrajeta. How does he move about? So, how does he speak means what? The person, the person gains knowledge of Atma and then suddenly his behavior will change. So how does he walk? Kim Rajet, how does he walk? How does he walk means what? What kind of question is this? Is this even a right question? How does he walk? Suddenly walking style changes, you know, because previously he was somebody else. Now he knows. So he has to be erect, you know, and uh, he has to watch out because he's pervasive and then uh, not get confused. And others also are watching him. So he has to, you know, some, something has to happen, no, in the, in the way of walking and all that. And uh, Swamiji, Tells us some Kim Prabhasheta. How does he talk? So he won't talk because it's all Atma. Everything is Atma. So that person is always in Samadhi because there is nothing other than Atma. Atma is all pervasive, means there is nothing other than Atma. So there is no reason to talk. Talking is, is required only if something is to be communicated. Communication means from one person to another person. There is no other person. Therefore, this person doesn't talk. He stops talking. Or, he, or this person is so deep in Atma that the words take time to come outside Atma through the mouth, you know, this vocal apparatus. It takes time. So that person will be speaking very slowly. Slowly, because where is the where is the need for speed here? What are you going to gain by speed? You must be speaking very slowly. Or or, or the person is just so happy, so excited, and there's so much to talk about. And words are just stumbling out of the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just the, 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 the mouth is incapable of keeping up with that much knowledge that is there in the mind. So he's constantly talking, 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 non-stop. Because so much to talk about. This, this is, is this the way Krishna should answer? How does the person talk? So, it can't be that. 
so that quick silver mind that is there you know the person is a jnani so that person's mind is not an ordinary mind so too many things are happening and he can't wait to speak no can't be like that that's what we so we can't interpret arjuna's question as how does he speak and uh, cannot take this literally <clears throat> so there then we will see later based on uh, krishna's answer that krishna did not take it literally and uh, he he took the spirit of the question how does he talk means what does he talk about what are the things which describe a wise person how does he relate to people what kinds of things does he talk about what is his vision how can his vision come out in his behavior in his life that that's the kind of question that is how a bhagwan krishna interpreted it and uh, so let's look at this shloka once again <clears throat> first line there is a verb that is missing ka bhasha within brackets you can say asti sanskrit students what is what is the bhasha here is uh, what does swami ji say yeah description का भाषा अस्ति व्हाट इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अ वाइज पर्सन एंड देन सेकंड लाइन आल्सो देयर आर दीस वर्ब्स प्रभाषेत आसीत एंड व्रजेत सो लेट्स लुक एट दिस हे केशव एड्रेस द एड्रेस इज देयर एट द लास्ट लास्ट वर्ड ऑफ द फर्स्ट लाइन हे केशव व्हाट इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अ पर्सन ऑफ फॉर्म विजडम शास्त्र how does such a person whose mind is not shaken by anything that sthita dihi how does that person speak prabhashet sit asit and walk prajet so that's how we translate this shloka hey keshava what is the description of a person of firm wisdom comma one whose mind abides in the self question mark how does such a person whose mind is not shaken by anything comma speak sit and walk okay so the first question that arjun asks uh, krishna after the points how he responds So verse number fifty-five. So in fact, this Arjuna has used such an important word, "sita pragna," that the rest of the teaching of Krishna is actually called "sita pragna lakshanam." So when somebody says "sita pragna lakshanam," it refers to these verses that Krishna is going to talk about. in the second chapter from verse number uh, this particular 55 till verse number 68 called sthita pragya lakshanam means the description of a sthita pragya so let's look at this yeah venkatesh pinjala you can unmute yourself <clears throat> yes i'm ready yeah so number 55 let's all chant श्री भगवान उवाच श्री भगवान उवाच प्रजहाति 
प्रजहाति यदा कामान यदा कामान सर्वान पार्थ सर्वान पार्थ मनोगतान मनोगतान आत्मन येव आत्मन येव आत्मना तुष्टह आत्मना तुष्टह स्थित प्रज्ञह स्थित प्रज्ञह तदोच्यते तदोच्यते श्री भगवान उवाच श्री भगवान उवाच प्रजहाति यदा कामान प्रजहाति यदा कामान सर्वान पार्थ मनोगतान सर्वान पार्थ मनोगतान आत्मन ये वात्मना तुष्टा आत्मन ये वात्मना तुष्टा स्थित प्रज्ञस्तदोच्यते स्थित प्रज्ञस्तदोच्यते क्या डर मैंने अनम्यूटेड बैंकटेश So here, Bhagavan Bhashikara, Shankaracharya reminds us that Krishna is going to talk about a wise person, the lakshanas of a wise person, namely a description of a wise person. What? How do I? How can I visualize in my mind what this wisdom can do to a person? That is what Arjuna is asking. So Krishna is going to talk about certain attributes, and and uh, Shankara says these attributes are of a wise person, no doubt, but they are also means disciplines for a karma yogi to practice, to think about, to dwell over. So the the attributes of a wise person become sadhanas for a. seeker sadhanas for a student sadhanas for a bhakta for a karma yogi okay and and so we will see as we look at some of these words we will see that aspect coming out and so so if you look at attributes of a person who is mature in general also so you've got compassion you've got empathy you've got amanitvam he's going to talk about some of these values later in the in the 13th chapter so absence of absence of speaking highly about oneself you know boasting absence of all these attributes that we may have ahimsa absence of hurting any being that desire to hurt it doesn't exist all these are all values which are natural for a wise person natural there are there are spontaneous expressions of a wise person but for a person who is a karma yogi who is pursuing this knowledge or studying the shastram these become become sadhanas these become means like that shankara explains to us explains to us that don't ignore these words these words can think can be things that you can hold on to as you lead your life like that shankara says because of the importance of these these uh, these attributes of a wise person <clears throat> okay so so let's look at this shloka prajahati first word prajahati that's the verb verb in this sentence first sentence anyway of this uh, shloka of this line of the shloka prajahati jahati gives up jahati gives up prajahati gives up completely gives up very well gives up with nothing remaining okay gives up what 
सर्वान कामान सर्वान कामान ऑल डिजायर्स so this is where this giving up of desires comes into our life our culture is all about giving up so krishna is answering first question praja hati tyaga bhava this our culture is all about tyaga very important so we have to understand all these things so don't conclude anything yet okay i'm just reminding you let's understand this words first so sarvan kaman praja hati and uh, what kind of desires when manogatan manogatan mana manaha mind manogatan as they arise in the mind as they arise in the mind this wise person gives up desires this is uh, this is a bit uh, hard to accept hard to accept i got up in the morning with a desire to get up in the morning you go you go to the you go to the restroom to with a desire to clean up you you open the faucet with a desire to take take a shower take bath and then you turn on go to the kitchen with a desire to make coffee desire is there behind every action and you don't give up a desire no there is no where do we give up desires then the, the, the entire series of series of actions is based on desires only desire is what makes us move makes us do things so if the person gives up desires means what if a person gives up desires then it's it's bit it's awkward because our pursuit of happiness is based on fulfilling desires one after the other we fulfill desires without fulfilling desires we can never be happy that being said if krishna is what krishna is saying is true if we take it literally then it means this person wise person has no way of becoming happy because all desires given up and so shankara says unmattah it says this person is will be a mad cap because you desires are given up and there is no way to fulfill the desires so it must be a mad cap or be on drugs all the time and be high and because you know i have studied bhagavad gita and following krishna's advice so this will become the state of that person this question can arise and so uh so we have to understand here that we acknowledge that a person is unhappy and then in order to become happy the person follows through on those desires desires can be everyday desires also going to work coming back from work all those are desires desire based actions an implied desire is always there so these two are always there i am unhappy and by by pursuing my desires and acting out i become happy this is the mindset this is the mindset so in the in the world that's how it is and nothing wrong with that but then the shastram is correcting the thinking bhagwan shri krishna is correcting that thinking even though that appears to be true really speaking happiness does not come by satisfying your desires why <laughs> because that happiness is your nature very important see how how we have to understand our shastram carefully and so he says atmani eva atmana tushtaha second line of the shloka atmani eva atmana tushtaha tushtaha means happy happy tushtaha aham tushto asmi i am very happy i am very happy that you could come all the way to kaimatur to meet me so tushtaha like that commonly used in sanskrit so atmani eva atmana tushtaha 
we need to understand that <clears throat> atmani eva in atma alone by being oneself atmana the person is happy this is the idea just by being oneself the person is happy the literal meaning of this phrase atmani eva atmana tushta it means which means without any external props without any external circumstances without depending on any situation the person is happy this is the bold statement that krishna is making it's a sugar crystal sugar crystal was complaining why because it said you know i want to be sweet complaining that i want to be sweet then he was told hey your nature is sweetness you can't become sweet nothing can make you sweeter than what you already are you are saturated with sweetness correct you are saturated with sweetness so don't try to become sweet if you try to become sweet you will struggle all your life correct you will struggle all your life you can you will constantly be want be wanting to become sweet because there is nothing sweeter than you out there and you are the one that gives sweetness to everything out there therefore don't go run after anything you are welcome to of course you have a body like that the person has to be told yeah to to maintain this body you have to do things no doubt the body needs things to survive it needs take care of all that but this ananda don't expect it to come from somewhere outside correct so this swami ji gives the example of this sugar crystal in this context and uh, so that person is called as sthita pragna and sthita pragna tada uchyate so tada yada tada by now even those who do not know sanskrit have gotten used to this correct <laughs> sanskrit student no of course yada and tada but otherwise those of you who been attending these classes now you know yada tada when this is the case then that is true when then so when the person gives up desires as and when they arise in the mind and the person because the person is happy being oneself just being oneself alive to the vision of atma being being of the nature of ananda that person is called as sthita pragna so in a way krishna is directly answering arjuna's question by using the word arjuna used the pragna that means krishna is acknowledging krishna is acknowledging that arjuna's choice of words is correct he did not correct arjuna okay <clears throat> so this is the this is the direction in which we are going and uh, and as i mentioned before bashikara shankaracharya will remind us periodically that these these attributes of this sthita pragna that is going to be talked about in the next dozen or so verses are nothing but means for a for a sadhaka a sadhanas for one who is who is pursuing the shastram who is studying the shastram <clears throat> so so next we have to talk a little bit about this desires itself you have to understand because it's a bold statement giving up desires means what it's it doesn't seem possible desire is a shakti right ichha shakti ichha shakti see jnana shakti kriya shakti 
these are all these are all the the endowments of a conscious being human being that comes in nalita sahasranam ichha shakti kriya shakti jnana shakti ichha means desire you cannot have a desire without knowing something in other words you cannot have a desire for something you do not know correct something you do not know you know these days they have this gun they point this gun on your forehead so if you two years ago if somebody pointed show, showed this gun to you would you like this what will you say you have to say what do you mean what is this thing is it some toy or what is it tell me what it is then i can tell you whether i like it or whether i don't like it whether i want it whether i want to buy it uh, all this i can say so gnanam that knowledge of something knowledge is a prerequisite for a desire that means we understand so gnanam gnana shakti the power to know then ichha shakti then the power to desire power to desire just think about that so animals don't have that shakti and then uh, kriya shakti no point having a desire unless i am given the ability to fulfill the desire desire ability given but kriya shakti not given that's a that's an imperfect creation that's a flaw in the creation flaw in the being not possible that won't work out therefore kriya shakti also given so jnana shakti ichha shakti kriya shakti so we do this a little and talk about so many talks about two kinds of desires binding desires and non binding desires so periodically we mentioned this and uh, so we have to talk about this which we will do in the next class <clears> oh <throat> स्वस्ति प्रजाभ्य पिपालयता मगेण महीं महिषा गोब्राह्मणेभ्य शुभमस्तु निोकास्मस्ता सुखिनो काले वर्षतु पर्जन्य पृथिवी सस्यशालिनी देशो यम क्षोभरिता ब्राह्मण सन्त निर्भया सुखिने सू निरामया भद्रा पश्य कचि दुख भागे असत मदगमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्ण मुदच्य पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवापशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओं